Now, in the last video, I talked about the relationship between each polygon and the information describing that polygon in the accompanying table. This relationship is what you could very easily call the mechanics of data storage in a geographical information system. Now, as it turns out, this map is a really, really good example to show you because there's some tricky stuff going on in it. The appearance of this map is heavily influenced by the way that the data in it is categorized. Now, there's two facets to this. The first facet is that for the sake of this demonstration, I've generalized the categories. I've simplified the way the map looks. And the second is that it's a time series map. So let's begin by having a bit of a look at map generalization. Now I've generalized the 21 data categories in this GIS um, file or table or map into nine categories. I just felt that it was far too much for me to expect you to shade 21 different categories of information on your first thematic mapping attempt. So what I mean by 21 different categories, here's um, the ungeneralized map, all the categories within the ungeneralized map. You can see there's 21 of them in here. And here's the generalized map, okay? So what we're looking at here is this not generalized column. So we're looking at land use 1999, okay? And for this map here, we're looking at summary 1999. So if I very quickly show you this map, okay, there's the whole map according to the nine categories. And this has been categorized according to a color scheme. Here we are with the 21 categories and simply using um, a default color scheme that comes with quantum GIS. Okay, so we'll zoom back to where we were because I want to show you some stuff. Coming back to this 21 versus 9 categories, another reason why you'd want to generalize uh, a, a very detailed map such as this is because although a map like this with so many categories is really, really important uh, for people who are doing research and desktop practitioners, the reality is that if you were trying to communicate something to uh, decision makers in a meeting, unless the decision makers really had their head around all these different categories, you're far more likely to have a productive meeting if you've got a reduced number of categories. So too many categories in some forums can create confusion and you're better off having a uh, generalized categorization. So I felt there were far too many categories describing similar things. So if I highlight this table, hold down the control key, and I can select multiple items, okay? And we'll have a look at this table again. I felt that there were far too many categories describing a similar thing. So what I did was I combined uh, categories such as, you know, quarter to half acre lots, larger than half acre, smaller than quarter acre, into a single category called urban. And of course, I did a similar thing with other categories. Now, the other facet to this is that we're looking at time series data. And this little selection that I've made here is another really, really good example to show you. Now, all these yellow areas that I've selected are all urban. You can see this color pink and you can see it's surrounded by pink. Okay, so by time series, what I mean is that instead of having a different map representing land use in each of the three years that we're going to show, we can have a single map that's capable of mapping the land use in all three of the years. So what we're seeing here 
is all the polygons I've selected, i.e. the ones that are shaded yellow or colored yellow. So if we look at the detailed land use, because of course this is what the polygons are based on and not my generalized version of the land use. So something that is forest in 1971 might have a little bit rezoned in 1985 or in 1999. In this case, it's uh, 1985 that's had a little chunk taken off it. Okay, this area of forest has been rezoned to be larger than half acre lots for um, urban purposes or semi-urban purposes. This area of forest remained forest. This area of forest um, was turned into quarter to half acre lots and, and so forth. So where you have this small portion of a land use in an earlier time period that becomes a different land use in a later time period, then the polygon must be split into two polygons so it can show both the time periods. And that's how you do time series. I hope that was clear. And if it wasn't, please make a comment and I'll do my best to, uh, to clarify it because it can be a bit of a tricky concept when you're first starting out. Okay, I will see you in the next video where we're going to look at shading the map. Okay. I'll see you there.